I've been drawing geology this whole time. Mountains, valleys, hills, plains. But I'll be honest, I've been thinking of it as placeholder until I can solve a bigger problem. Consider this video to be my hypothesis, and then I'll be testing that hypothesis as the project unfolds. The Shepherd's Valley forced me to think harder about this subject. I finally had my first location with specific requirements, a remote hidden landscape safely nestled between two mountain ranges. I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to build a model, something that would help me to keep things consistent from shot to shot and to help find cool storytelling opportunities. But the more I developed it, the more I realized that I was slipping into default mountain territory. And somehow that felt off. For years now, I've been enjoying drawing tropical mountains inspired by a visit to the Iao Valley in Maui. I leaned heavily on this inspiration when I worked on my previous story, Tellurian. Tall mountains with sharp ridges overgrown with dense tropical foliage. And by default, I was using that look in Dead Gods as well. This is where research really comes in handy. I was just in Colorado Springs and visited the Garden of the Gods. It's full of these beautiful, colossal rock structures. Obviously, pictures will never do them justice. Taking the opportunity to see things in person helps to provide a sense of scale, of mass, but most importantly, it helps you push past the limits of your own knowledge. Seeing a location like this for real made me realize just how tame I was being. It made me want to inject even more grandeur into the antediluvian world. But while this kind of geology was exactly the inspiration I needed for awe, it's not something I'm going to use directly. It's not quite right for a very specific reason. As you know, the mountain formations we know and love are formed by tectonic plates ramming into each other, folding and crunching and bending into spectacular landscapes. In other cases, sites like the Garden of the Gods are formed by huge mineral deposits being exposed through incredible amounts of erosion. For a while now, I've been thinking of a way to visually represent a fresh world, a place that still feels hot out of the oven, geology with a new car smell. My trip to Colorado whet my appetite for more research, and I started thinking about basalt columns, where lava forms into uniform columns, cools, and is eventually exposed. Here's the point where I'm going to take a big creative leap. Geologists, you may want to plug your ears. What I'm trying to find is a visual language that's clearly different than our modern world. From a visual storytelling perspective, I'd almost like it to look more manufactured. So what if the entire landscape was created from raised columns of the Earth's crust? I built a quick model to demonstrate. Obviously, it wouldn't be as uniform as this. This is purely for demonstration purposes. But imagine huge rock formations being extracted, sections being selected and raised to their desired altitudes. Depending on their height and shape, they become mountains, plateaus, valleys, and plains. This being a greenhouse world, as discussed in my videos about flora and fauna and the atmosphere, plant life swiftly finds anywhere it can to thrive. Over the course of centuries, through humidity and the aggressive growth of vegetation, these rock formations begin to break down. Erosion does still take place, but remember there will have been significantly less of it, and this is a world that doesn't yet know rain. With accelerated growth in ideal conditions, vegetation thrives and dies and quickly builds up large deposits of healthy, moisture-absorbing soil. This model provides a fun, unifying visual language that can be reshaped in many ways, depending on what the story demands. Some low hills are formed over some more shallow rock formations. They could be narrower and more numerous, creating forests of stone monoliths. Perhaps in some cases, the rock emerged at different angles, creating highly recognizable landmarks. This model can also scale, with some shapes being smaller and more manageable, while others could rival Everest. What few formations survive the cataclysm will be subjected to unthinkable levels of erosion very quickly. Additionally, the greenhouse atmosphere raises the tree line far above where it is today, allowing for sturdy plants to cling to life even at incredible altitudes. I wanted to put this idea to the test in 3D right away, and I'm happy to tell you that my first test was a failure, more due to my own lack of proficiency with the tools, but as I've said before, that's how we learn. Using Blender, I made some rocks and rough landscape models to block things in, and I was able to get it to this point. Think of this as a 3D sketch. There are a hundred changes I would make to this thing, 
But honestly, it took ages to render and it would be a better use of my time to just scrap it and start from scratch. However, I do think it gets the general idea across. From here on out, whenever there's a landscape in view, I'll be trying to find the right balance for this direction. I know it will eventually click or something better will emerge. But at the moment, I suspect it will give me a fun way to create unique locations that feel like they're part of the same cohesive world. Between dragons, giants, art deco, technology, and now geology, it's feeling like all of these pieces need more work to be shaken down and fused together. They'll all influence each other in unpredictable ways. Imagine a giant's art deco temple carved into the side of a mountain-sized stone column to get away from the dragon-infested wilderness below. It's crackling with potential, and with world building like this, I feel like a kid in a candy shop. Thanks for watching. You can help this project. Click the buttons, leave a comment, go to my website, buy a book or a print, follow me on stuff, sign up on Patreon. Thank you all so much for the support you've already shown. It's been overwhelming. And a special thank you to my Dragging Tear patrons. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.